In the second lesson on analytical geometry, we're still using our grade 10 formulas, but we're going to have a look at how we can use them to calculate an unknown value in the coordinate. Example 1. For which value or values of t are the points a, b and c collinear? So to get started here, we need to make sure that we know the theory for the word collinear. The word collinear means that all three of these points are on the same line, and therefore the gradient of AB will be the same as the gradient of AC, which will also be the same as the gradient of BC. So here we have three options of gradients to work with, and we're going to choose two of them to set up an equation that we can use to solve t. I'm going to work with the gradient of AB and put it equal to the gradient of BC. And now I can substitute into our gradient equation. So on the left, I'm going to use the Y of B minus the Y of A divided by the X of B minus the X of A. And on the right, I will have the Y of C minus the Y of B divided by the x of c minus the x of b. And now, once again, it helps if I now go and name all those different coordinates so that I can easily substitute. So the y of b is 2t minus the y of a, 3t, divided by the x of b, which is t plus 3, minus the x of a, which is t. On the right, the y of c is t minus 1, minus the y of b, 2t. And I'm dividing by the x of c, 10. And now it's very important to subtract in a bracket your x of b, or the t plus 3, to ensure that you don't make sign mistakes. Next up, we can now simplify. And now we need to get a common denominator, or we can choose to cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply the minus t with the 7 minus t, denominator of the right, and I'm going to multiply the minus t minus 1 by the 3, the denominator of the left. Next, I'm going to simplify by multiplying in the minus t on the left and the 3 on the right. So that means I will have minus 7t plus t squared is equal to minus 3t minus 3. And here you need to recognize that this is a quadratic equation, so you need to get all the terms on one side equal to zero. And now we have a trinomial that can be factorized. So when we factorize this, it will break up into t minus 3 multiplied with t minus 1. This means we now have two possible options. t minus 3 can be zero, or t minus 1 can be zero. And then t can be 3 or t can be 1. So here we have two possible values for t. Example 2. Given points a minus 2, 1, b, 1, 3, c, 5, minus 3, and d, minus 1, k. Determine the value of k if, for our first question, a, B is parallel to C, D. We already know that parallel lines have the same gradient, so here we can focus on the gradient of A, B, and that should be equal to the gradient of C, D. So here our calculations will look exactly like in example 1, even though the question is different. So once again I start off adapting my equation to our given letters and substituting. When substituting, once again be careful of your signs. And next up, we can then simplify and again cross multiply. So now I'll have minus 12 is equal to 3 multiplied by k plus 3, which will give me minus 12 is equal to 3k plus 9. So to solve k, I need to subtract the minus 9 on the left and then I'll get minus 21. And if I now divide by 3, I will get k is minus 7. Question B is now to determine K if AB is perpendicular to CD. And for perpendicular lines, we know that the product of the two gradients should be equal to minus 1. 
For two gradients to have a product of minus 1, firstly, their signs have to be different because a plus multiplied by minus will give us a minus. Then, to get the 1, the second gradient should be the reciprocal of the first gradient. So if, for example, I know that my first gradient is a half, I can make the logic deduction that the gradient that is perpendicular this to this will have the opposite sign, so negative, and the reciprocal of 1 over 2, which is 2 over 1, or simply 2. Or if I, for example, knew that the first gradient was minus 3 over 4, I could make the deduction immediately that the line perpendicular to that will have the reciprocal, so 4 over 3, and the opposite sign as gradient. So if we go back to our question, we can immediately calculate the gradient of AB because we know all four the coordinates, so I can substitute them, and when I simplify, the gradient will be 2 over 3. Now I can immediately make the deduction that the gradient of CD will then have to be the reciprocal of this, so 3 over 2, with the opposite sign of a minus. And now I can go and calculate the gradient of CD. So I substitute into my equation, and then I can simplify. So on the right, I'll have k plus 3 over minus 6. Now to solve k, I need to get rid of the minus 6. So I'm going to multiply with minus 6 on the left to get 18 over 2. And that can be simplified to 9. And to get rid of the plus 3, I'm going to subtract 3 on the left. And that means that k is equal to 6. Example 3. The point P is equidistant from the points A and B. Determine the value of x. So firstly here, because they say equidistant, we can use the distance formula. And they say P is the same distance from A and from B. So PA will be equal to PB. And now we can go and substitute into our distance formula. And when I now substitute, I can also square on both sides so that I get rid of the square roots and I'm left only with the brackets. Next, I can simplify these brackets one by one. And here it is important to remember that when I multiply out a bracket squared, there's a middle term. So in my first bracket squared, I will have x squared plus 8x plus 16. And I'm reminding you that that middle term is the product that I double. And then on the right, I will have x squared minus 16x plus 64. When I now want to simplify, you will see that the x squares simplify to 0. So I'm left with a linear equation. And that means I want all the x's on one side. And that will give me 24x is equal to 72. And when I now divide by 24, x will be 3.